All right, we're gonna just try to catch him off guard. Updated injury. He has a bruised shoulder. Okay, so he's gonna be out. That's cool that they put the position because now you will know who the replacement is. And if it's somebody that's lesser talented, you can count. It. Oh, look at number eight. Oh crap! Floated it too much. I said number A. I mean letter A. <laughs> okay, so again, it tells you uh, right in number 16. It's a minor injury, but can return with the risk of injuring himself further. And what happened, the reason why they do this, if I decide to put him in and you go back to your depth chart and look at your player's ratings, there are going to be some ratings that are going to be reduced because he has an injury. And it's usually going to be ratings that are affected uh, by the injury. So let's just say I'll go ahead and put him back in the game. Uh, where well, it says two quarters. So if I put him back in, then let's go and see. He was number 16, right? So, so let's see. Go to my depth chart. It's right in. So it's number 16. So let's see if. Uh, I know in Madden that's what they did. There will be some ratings that will be affected. So we'll see. Um, I don't know what his ratings were beforehand, but we'll see if uh, anything gets adjusted while we um, when he gets back in the game. Second H power talk. See, I don't even. I, I have never seen this play before. Man in motion. Yeah, we know about the man in motion. I'm looking for the man in motion. All right, let's go. See, I probably would have never even picked this play. Oh, oh, look at that. Yes, nice play. That should definitely get his confidence up. Put his shoulders down, spun around out the tackle. Yeah. Nice, I likes, I likes. The offense calls okay. a timeout. Call a timeout. So do this X post, Let's but I'm gonna the defense responds to giving I'm gonna take my A receiver, take him on an out route, and then I'm also gonna make it a smart route so he can at least get the first down. Send him in motion because I want him to cut across the field. Oh, they sent the house. Got 10 seconds, okay. Uh, I'm gonna do this flood play over here. But what I want to do is my number, my letter, my X receiver number seven. I want to send him on a drag route. So X and pull down on the right analog stick. So there, he should cut across. Maybe he'll. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. When this guy's got time to throw, he makes the defense pay. Again, uh, ratings, guys, they, they do play a factor in this year's game where um, if your receiver gets a has a certain lead on the on the defender, uh, and if you put the ball in the right spot, uh, you'll probably uh, have a successful play. So, looking at this play again, let's uh, diagnose what we just seen. So, I just wanted to send number seven across here because I was so heavily loaded over here that it would probably get too congested because I didn't have a lot of field to work with and there was nothing over there. So if I send him on a drag route right across the seam, even though I had my tight end going on the route there too, but look at the lead. And again, I'm gonna tell you where he got where this lead. Hold on, I hate this crap. 
Okay. All right, and th this is where it came into effect. Did you did you see, look at the defender when he came down to contest my and it's that safety back there. Watch when he comes up to number seven. Watch how he, the local motion. This is local motion coming into play right here. He plants his feet. Boom. He plants his feet right there. But because he did that, his momentum was shifting forward and not to the side, which is where my receiver made his break. That's how he got the. That's how he got that jump on him, and that's how he got to his lead. And then pretty much after that, look at that. Look at the gap he opened up in that short amount of time. And no warping. He, the, the defender did not warp to try to, you know, block the pass. My receiver didn't warp to uh, get to the pass. It was a good fluid pass. So, you know, when this local motion, when you guys hear it being talked about, this is, this is one of the ways you see it come, come to fruition. Because, again, like I said, he came down, he, he, he dipped. And that's, and that's what really hurt him. Uh, just that little that little brief stop right there when he did that see he's planning to make a making a move adjustment while my receiver's already making his turn on his route I mean he did recover pretty good but his momentum he couldn't get up his acceleration he couldn't get it he couldn't get it together because I was already building mine and I left him so great job with the local motion just want to give you guys a little lesson right there All right, so we got these guys. We're, good. We're dominating them. So I think what I'm going to do in the second half to see, um, you know, see how the ratings do take effect, I may put my second string defense in. Well, actually, I need to put my second string defense and offense in. I mean, I got them by three scores. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, do it, man deep. Three man deep. <laughs> yeah. Boy, still playing hard out there. We broke the spirit of Wyoming. Now, I really wish they would have put some halftime highlights. I think they could have done that. I mean, especially when they automatically do replays after every play. They can take some of the best replays because it's automatically being stored to my hard drive anyway. So. That's something they should have implemented. Um, I'm not going to say it was lazy, but I think it could have been done. Because, I mean, basically, all these, I mean, every play is, is saved to the hard drive right now. Every play. And they all have a, have a grade. So why not put the ones with the A grade as a halftime highlights? Or even if you don't have any with the A, go to the next letter down, B plus. Or, you know, that's what they should have done. But, you know, you can't have it all. They do have some uh, highlights at the end of the game. So, all right, and then we're going to start out on offense. And I'll do the first series with my first string, and then I'll uh, put in my uh, second string. I'll tell you what, though, they're, they're going for that strip. They're trying to take that ball. So this is what you need to do. If you want a game plan, you have to click in the right thumbstick because you got to go to the advanced play call screen. And then from there... Um, Let's see. Crap, I forgot how to do this shit. Um, there you go. You got to hit X and then you hit X to game plan. And while you're game planning, there's no time coming off the play clock. So you can sit, you can take your time doing this. Because what I'm noticing that they're doing now, they're trying to strip the ball from my running back. So what I want to do, I want to go conservative on my run. I can go conservative everything because I have such a big lead. Uh, but I'm going to go conservative on my run because, as you can see down there, it says the, the positives and the negatives for going conservative. The positive is I'm going to lower my chances of fumble, so which means they, they won't be able to strip the ball from me. It, the percentages are way more in my favor for me to keep the ball. But I won't break as many tackles. Uh, and then tempo, I can go with a conservative tempo and, um, you know, have more time, run off the clock. Uh, that'll usually come later in the fourth quarter. I don't really like to do that early on. 
uh, for my catch. I'm not gonna worry. I leave that balanced. Aggressive block. See everything else. I leave balanced. Cause but right now I definitely want to have my running back or my runners hold onto the ball. Okay. The offense will take over. I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. First and ten. They need to hurry, and this is gonna be a delay of game. Crap. Now wait a minute. Nope. 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 They call timeout. Yep. Well, that was a new uh, commentary line. They'll throw on first down. Oh, he, oh, I gotta show you guys a replay of that. What I noticed on that play was that cornerback covering that receiver right there, number 87. He thought I was about to scramble and run out the pocket, so he moved away from his assignment to see to try to uh, cheat and, and uh, get a get try to get a tackle on me or to see what I was going to do. He tried to cheat, and I noticed he left my guy a little open, and that's why I went with him. So watch uh, over on the far right, the receiver, the cornerback is covering number 87. Now watch. He came in, I actually thought he came in a, a little bit later than that, but when my man stopped up to uh, for his route, okay, that, okay, I, that's what it looks like. Looks like he thought I was about to get tackled. He came up, thought he was going to jump in and get, get some of that tackle, and then I threw it. But the good thing about that is he didn't uh, have eyes in the back of his head and just jump up. He reacted when he seen me throw the ball because he knew it was coming to his area, but the ball got there too quickly. That's pretty cool. See, I'm even catching things I didn't see on these replays from what I thought I seen in live action. But that was cool, though, that uh, the good part about that is that, again, eyes, he didn't have eyes in the back of his head and automatically jump up. You know, they did a little weird animation they had in the previous versions they'll jump up and swat the ball even though they're not even looking at it they're not even knowing where it's going on the ground with the tailback and he's tackled after positive yardage and we'll take a break while the injured player is attended to <laughs> and we'll take a break oh that's pretty cool kind of like going to commercial or whatever he's hurt so that's number 23 Sometimes I wish they would say, uh, show you like a little scene of the, the number of the guy who's being subbed in to replace him, so you can kind of know line. Second down. who you can uh, attack. They come out at a